I found it rather. It's 2 Corinthians 10. I actually had to go into Google. I knew it was one in one of the Corinthian books. Let's read from verse 2. It is written, 2 Corinthians 10 from verse 2. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as we walked according to the flesh. For we walk in the flesh, we do not war. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So you obey until your obedience to God is an avenge, a revenge against all the disobedience that encircles you and you get there by realizing that we walk not by flesh not by the flesh that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but are, but are mighty in god for the pulling down of strongholds so whether or not i'm being threatened with singlehood for my life is irrelevant for the rest of my life and that we must cast down imaginations or the version that i have memorized is we must demolish arguments in every lofty pretension that exalts itself above the Most High, and hold into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. And here you have a readiness to basically revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So by simply maintaining obedience to Christ, ultimately you revenge against disobedience of wicked men. It's all about casting down imaginations, that which would slip into your mind, trying to change it, that you might essentially exalt Satan above God and overwhelm the veracity of God of what God is saying with fear. Whereas God says that perfect love casts out fear and he who has been made perfect in love does not fear. So how do you demolish these arguments? You study God's word. The Lord has given you a plethora of convictions and promises. And he has told you who he is and who you are in him anything contrary to that is a lie but the devil's voice and i have said this before is clamorous it is cantankerous it's noisome it's gongy it is an incoherent orchestra with with one instrument playing out of tune with the next so therefore it's easier to listen to you however have got to drown out the voice of the devil by the stillness that comes with knowing jesus the, the voice of God is a still small voice, but it's impactful, powerful, overwhelming and stilling and also violently audible. When you are chilled and tuned into faith, when you are chilled and tuned into fearlessness that is brought about by the belief by faith of what God says about himself and about you when you are in him. When you believe the words of God about your life, all of a sudden the clamorous, loud, noisome, gongy orchestra of the devil stills, it's quiet. But that is a whole trudging. It's a fight. It's a war. You have got to fight for your mind to breathe. You've got to fight for you to stop believing the lies. The loud orchestra of Satan, you've got to drown it out with the peace of heaven. And you do not get the peace of heaven without getting in God's word and learning who he is and what he says about you in him and himself in your life. So that's why studying the word of God and putting it to practice is the only way that you get shown approved. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Therefore, if you do not believe the words of God, you can never drown out the voice of Satan if you take God's word and you shudder anyway in the climate of being threatened by devil worshippers, you are flaccid and fluffy like it is written in the book of James and should not anticipate that you're going to get anything in prayer. That's why it's written in John 15 that you must abide in me and my words must abide in you that whatever you ask for in prayer will be awarded you. So if you have prayed for a husband, if you have prayed for some children, 
if you have prayed for whatever you've prayed for no matter how long it takes you need to just keep believing believing that seeing as his words have abided in you and you seeing as you have abided in him and his words abided in you that which you ask for in prayer is going to be given you no matter how long you wait do not allow time the passage of it to cause you to flounder to falter because for as long as you're still drawing breath you can still get answered prayer is that basic and you you see the thing here is about the, the like people of the kingdom of darkness unlike saints are not trained long suffering they are into instant gratification while we're into delayed so they underestimate the holy spirit's working in of long suffering in us and of patience and fortitude they underestimate the power of waiting but and so because they underestimate it in the run-up to you getting your answered prayer they will utilize what looks like no answered prayer to try and threaten you into settling and you see the bible however you see he's amazing the word of god is amazing that way it's sharper than a double-edged sword living and active able to separate between bone and marrow soul and spirit so therefore this quickening word of god is able to basically have a solution to every last scratch on your body every last open wound he has a sutures for it the bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick so i mean if at all you've been told that your heart is going to be sick because you are yet to get answered prayer seeing as the bible has said that it means that given that you've been told what you're going to endure before it happens you should therefore now by faith calm down because you are your heart is sick right now only because your hope is deferred but understand that a longing that is ultimately going to get fulfilled that is your tree of life so by faith just wait on me and when then you wait on god this here is yet another promise from the word isaiah 40 31 those who wait on the lord shall renew their strength they will mount up with wings like eagles they will run and not faint they will walk and not grow weary and before that is actually spoken in isaiah 40 31 let's just go to isaiah 40 and read the passages preceding that to help you understand that everybody else falls apart around the waiting saint except the saint isaiah 40 from verse um uh, from verse let's say 29 right yes isaiah 40 from verse 29 it is written he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increaseth strength even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint so basically what is being spoken there is that we know that your heart is is is, is sick because your hope is deferred but i'm gonna give you power when you are faint and you who have no might i'm gonna increase your strength but everybody else around you is gonna fall apart because they don't know me even when they're young and have vigor in their bones they will faint in comparison to you who's a 40 year old woman out you trudging through the streets of christian persecution young men shall faint and be wary and the youth shall faint and be wary and young men shall utterly fall you who wait on jesus christ you will wait upon me and i will renew your strength you will mount up with wings like an eagle you will run and not be weary and you will walk and not faint psalm 91 a similar utterance is spoken therein about how it is that it's everyone else but us that falls apart but how it is that people out here be trying to essentially play games dangerous ones they are trying to but 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 by Asia, but Testa, they are experimental. All these other experimental people that are trying to make you fall apart, they're not gonna succeed. But everyone else that they succeed against, everybody else that they bewitch that does not wait on Jesus, the error of their ways is going to cause them to fall left and right and all about you. Do you understand? It is written in Psalm 91 from verse 7 that first let's actually read from verse 4 psalm 91 from verse 4 it is written 
he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust and his trust shall be thy shield and buckler thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night these nightmares nor for the arrow that flieth by day this exhausted body in the day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness your insistence on infecting me with hiv nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday you threatening me that i'm not going to ever have any company in my life and this is what god says that those that are basically afflicted by these spells that don't know jesus a thousand shall fall at thy side from the same spells that have afflicted you that's why they're so pompous these people in the occult it's because they have lain waste so many other people so they think a christian is just a tougher stain to remove from their garments and so they keep trying and trying but god has this to say a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall it shall not come nigh thee let's hear it again a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh thee this is what is called exegesis exegesis and hermeneutics rightful division of god's word the right way to do hermeneutics to interpret scripture with scripture to understand the word of god and bomb up a text and understand it to basically walk in an expository expository fashion of studying the word of god hence why it is written in second timothy 3 2 sorry second timothy 2 that study to show yourself approved a workman that needeth not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth this is right division of god's word in psalm 91 after verse 7 the thousand part a thousand shall fall at thy side ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh thee and then this is what god has to say then i get it it was written in for in second corinthians 10 that with your obedience you're going to revenge against the disobedience of the disobedient this is it here all right only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked that is now psalm 91 verse 8. second corinthians 10 uh i think now it's 11 where it is where it said that by being obedient to god that obedience handles the wicked disobedience this is then when after ten thousand and a thousand fall everywhere we then watch you you are the ones seeing as you were into the hunger games watching suffering people die you now essentially the christian gets the last love you now are the one archer that is being watched fall apart only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked the floods have sorry because thou ha thou hast made the lord which is my refuge even the most high thy habitation there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling for he has given his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou shalt dash th thy foot against a stone thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder and again luke 10 30 luke 10 19 scripture interpreting scripture the lord has given us authority to make sorry uh, he has given us authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm us and here it is that in psalm 91 that same promise is being given us for he shall give sorry uh, they shall bear so again let me the, um, sorry from 30 thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder the young lion and the dragon thou shalt trample under feet luke 10 19 right there but this time it's uh 91 psalm 91 13 because he has set his love upon me from 14 therefore will i deliver him i will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon me and i will answer him i will be with him in trouble i will deliver him and honor him with long life i will satisfy him and show him my salvation that's what god has to say about a saint people love psalm 91 even those that don't know jesus every time they meet with a bad rap every time they meet with a bad circumstance they are just quoting psalm 91 they are just putting it on a bump on a bumper sticker on their dashboard or on the on the windows of their cars just so they can lay claim to promises lay claim to promises that don't belong to them these promises only belong to you when you have waited upon mount zion and not been shaken but endure forever psalm 125 when you have not someone blessed as the man that walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of scoffers but whose delight is in the law of the lord and on his law he meditates day and night he's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season 
and whose leaf does not wither and in all that he does he prospers yeah you don't get to lay claim to god's promises when you are not walking away from the counsel of the wicked when you are standing in the way of the sinners and when you are sitting in the seat of the scornful in other words when you're walking in folly you don't get to lay claim to psalm 91 it's not for you it's only for christians it's only for people who are on the narrow road that leads to life that few people find it's only for those that have built their houses upon the rock and so therefore they take god's words into practice it's only for those who's who have abided in jesus christ and his words abided in them so that when they ask for stuff in prayer it gets given them this psalm is only for us who are serious with jesus christ who are not fluffy vessels of dishonor out here walking around like judas around jesus however without obeying him who are like saul out here walking around christ and yet unprepared to listen to his admonitions as to what he needs to, to do it does not belong to people who are insincere with the lord lukewarm seeker sensitive having a reputation for being alive even though they're dead out here not being hot nor cold and because they're lukewarm god is going to spit them out of his mouth it does not belong to insincere people do you understand what i'm saying but like you love it so much that you like i said it's your bumper sticker it is your dashboard board sticker it is the thing dangling on your uh can you, as a lanyard on your access card in the office psalm 91 you have got it all over because it's just so incredibly protective like when you live in a country like south africa so full of witchcraft you need psalm 91 to apply to you but it can never apply to you when you are not like isaiah 40 31 says waiting truly on the lord when you have capitulated and settled and done all different kinds of strange things you're not going to mount up with wings like eagles you're not going to run and not faint walk and not grow weary you are going to rather fall apart like those young men that fall exhausted like those 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 people that, that that youths that faint and the young men that fall exhausted you're gonna be like them you're gonna be like it is written in um seven 91 7 psalm 91 7 you're gonna be among the thousand that fall on the side and the ten thousand that fall on the right hand and you are gonna look at Carabo like cain and try to kill her oh cain right when she is able you are going to want to kill her because she has basically given god what is an acceptable sacrifice basically a person that has made themselves a workman approved by jesus christ second timothy 2 study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not be ashamed a workman that needeth not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth but shun profane and vain babblings second corinthians 10 demolish arguments for they will increase unto more ungodliness. My point exactly. When you don't demolish arguments. My phone is, is getting hot. Let me just put this thing behind it so it can cool down. When you don't demolish arguments. You flounder. And so you end up walking in disobedience. When you don't demolish arguments. You tend unto ungodliness. Essentially you react to stimuli that is coming around you sinfully so in my case it would be the ten amount of just taking anything that comes that i know is a satanist or fornication just to get a job or you get my point like when you don't apply god's word you will flounder in what when when you don't take god's word seriously you are going to flounder in your waiting you are going to allow that which is the loud gongy argument that that loud voice of the devil that that is just cantankerous just going and going and going in your mind you're going to labor on it until you do whatever it takes to relieve yourself from an extreme fear you to relieve yourself from an extreme fear you're going to essentially accommodate satan do you, like are you catching do you get what i'm saying yeah so when i come here and I speak about how South Africa is just this like tormentive ancient civilization in the movie Apocalypto killing its citizens for sports priding yourselves in the decimation of innocent souls woe to you and all you do is cause God's people to pray to be set free from you like when, when, when heaven is filling up with prayers of people to be set free from you why under heaven do you think that you're going to heaven i've got so many people that are professing christians imaginative that they're going to heaven when they die that have done this to me that keep on bewitching people on the left and on the right of them and yet they have got saints true saints on the ground 
petitioning heaven to be delivered from them. Like if somebody is actively praying to God to deliver them from you, you're not saved. You're not saved. Like by this men will know that you're my disciples love one another. When you are hating a Christian to a point of stealing their husband, their jobs, their, you get my point. And then you say a sinner's prayer at the end of the day, like whatever man, like, you know, I keep doing videos of this nature and I'm exhausted. I am literally out of my mind, tired of speaking to unregenerate wannabe Christians. Second Timothy 2 from 15 again, study to show yourself, thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Do not some of you approach the throne of grace with sorrow and shame. Because let's about last week you cast a spell on someone. Because you know that you've been fornicating. And if you go to the throne of grace without shame, doing those things, more so an abomination are you. You ought at least be ashamed of yourself that you're actively cursing people while calling yourself Christian. At a minimum, at least let that be a thing. But if you're not even phased, more so are you not anything close to be a Christian or to being a Christian. But shun profane and vain babblings like the ones that keep on hurting me right now. For they will only increase unto more ungodliness and their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. Listen to this again. And their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. What is a canker? I don't know, but it is some kind of a worm that eats away at crop. Joel 2, again, hermeneutics, again, exegeting scripture, again, expositing. Uh, Joel, 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 Joel 2. Okay, it is written in God's word in Joel 2. I need to find it real quick so that I don't dilly dally and beat around around the bush. I found it after I stopped recording there very quickly. Alrighty, cool beans and uh, bananas, right? So, let's read again 2 Timothy 2. It is written there. Their word, so basically, uh, what? And I can't even move my, my, um, I can't even show you what's going on there because my phone is literally tra entrapped in some kind of a contraption right now, uh, in front of the ice, uh, the ice pack. To keep it cool so i can't move it but the cat like it's just doing such strange things back there anyway whatever moving on right let's read again i'm sorry for that distraction but shun profane and vain babblings for they will increase unto more ungodliness and their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is hymenaeus and philetus so hymenaeus and philetus are obviously a type of a person here these are individuals that not only cause the wickedness of people but in and of themselves they walk in a particular way like naysayers the very people that i'm encircled by right now people that are a worm a maggot that are out here brewing and stewing in cauldrons sentiment into people trying to make them abandon jesus oh there's my cat now you see her there she is over there do you see the cat cute isn't it yeah people that are literally disregarding the living daylights out of okay now please don't let my cat distract you because it is certainly distracting me it is certainly distracting me anyway yeah people that cause you to walk away from god people that cause you to sin people that cause so much fear in you and and witches are prolific they are prolific in doing that because they 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 use these uh, mind control spirits in their little cauldrons where they try to change a person's mind they 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 enter into your mindset using spirits that are going to whisper sweet nothings into your ear hoping to cause you trepidation hoping to cause you fear fear sufficient 
to eventually do that which is unseemly ungodly and uncharacteristic of you you will end up walking in sin because you are scared and so therefore you will be stolen from now in second timothy 2 in second timothy 3 2 it is written of this hymenaeus and philetus or and otherwise known as the south african dastardly witches their word will eat as doth a canker in other words they're naysaying all these things that they say to try and convince you to have sinned like with me i was lambasted with somebody saying to me single for the rest of your days garabo you will you're, you're never gonna ever fall in love you're going to be single forever you're just gonna stay single that's the spell that they're casting and that's their sentiment unless you are with me unless unless you accept what i'm giving you just take it yeah now if i end up going out and dating a devil worshiper or he's a devil worshiper just for the sake of not being lonely i will have capitulated to lies i will have capitulated to fear that will have made me just for the sake of being romanced at all take anything in my stride i already made mention that it does make me sorrowful to think about being single forever it does make me sorrowful about being left in this position forever I do get sad about the fact that I don't have children. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I, I don't need a man. I don't need anything. Please, I'm, I would be lying to myself. I know what I ask for in prayer. I don't have anything. And it really hurts. But literally over my dead body before I will take just anything. Especially when it is just freaking diabolical. When it's satanic. Because that would be the theft of that which I ask for from God. That would equate to Ukjon that would be equate to basically that which is in an eating away maggot. So Hymenaeus and Philetus are described as maggots, right? Mandrebona, they are a canker. Their word, their word eats as doth a canker. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus? Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some? so people who speak smack against the cross and then they make people flounder in their faith according to second joel no sorry joel 2 it is written and i will restore to you in joel 2 25 let's read from 24 and the floors shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil no actually let's read from 23 joel 2 23 be glad then ye children of zion and rejoice in the lord your god for he hath given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain the former rain and the latter rain in the first month in the first month and the floors shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil and i will restore to you this is what i'm trying to get to and i will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten the canker worm that's what i was trying to get at and the caterpillar and the palm worm my great army which i sent you and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the lord your god that he hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed and ye shall know that i am in the midst of israel and that i am the lord your god and none else and my people shall never be ashamed let's read 25 again and i will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army which i sent among you second timothy 2 here it is written that hymenaeus and philetus are like the canker worm there's some kind of a diminishing a devouring sentiment there's something that just eats away at you until you've lost your faith there are people that rock up and cause you to dismantle the truth you have come to learn they come into your camp and they make you feel that you are wasting time they give you false doctrines they give you anathema and they cause disinterest in you in the things of god the resurrection is our promise essentially we are told that we're going to embrace eternal life one day that when we pass away we are going to be resurrected so if the resurrected has come and gone and we're still here essentially you will lose faith right like what have i done i've believed in vain i of all people and mo am most to be pitied because i'm waiting for my allah i'm just living 
to endure a nihilistic end to my person where I die and that's it and yet I will have striven so horrifically waiting on Christ in a world that hates Christianity and Christ only for me to just nothing happens it just it's poof, it's dead it's gone because the resurrection has already happened so I am believing in vain if at all you are believing in vain what is the point of maintaining your faith right mm. so it causes people to flounder from their faith if you don't believe upon the resurrection well a hymenaeus and the philetus type individual is one that tells you that time is come and time is gone they come and they tell you you're 40 years old and you are yet to have a, a husband and you've got a geriatric womb you haven't had children nothing is coming no one is uh, uh, gonna pitch uh, for you they tell you that you're wasting your life you're wasting your time might as well just throw in your lot with all of us they tell you that if you hold on to this jesus you are literally facing the danger the the thick and rich voluptuous danger of dying lonely you're gonna die all by yourself you're gonna be in solitude and isolation for the rest of your days because you are picky you are arrogant and you are judgy and with all of this uh, dogma with all of this uh, um, bigotry of yours you are going to find yourself in a moon you are going to basically just age like a prune you are going to be like sourdough you are just going to get older and older and then we're going to be looking at the watch at 45 and you're still going to be out here pushing a trolley of Christ is coming for me I know what I prayed for and you are going to hold on to your standards when there's nothing and no one coming for you they're a freaking canker worm they're a palmer worm they're a locust they are that which devours crop they are that which takes away faith they are telling you the resurrection has come and gone so you are believing in christ in vain because when you die they are saying that nothing is going to give with all of your patience stuff like that when you believe it if you don't demolish arguments and every lofty pretension that exalts itself above the most high and you don't hold into captivity every last one of your thoughts to the obedience of jesus christ you will indeed tend towards ungodliness like it is written in second timothy 2 you will take anything that is given you you will literally marry a psychopath because he's the only one you will literally fornicate and have a baby real quick because i'm 40 and i've got a geriatric womb and i might just menopause tomorrow you will literally do whatever under heaven it takes in order for you to overcome your fear when then you fornicate and you let some filthy man have your body because you are in a rush to have a child a locust has eaten away at you a palmer worm a canker worm that which is a devouring insect will have eaten into you you will not have waited on the lord so your strength won't be renewed you're going to faint and you're going to be among the people that fall on the side on the, the ten thousand a thousand will fall on the left and ten thousand on on the side a, a thousand will fall on your side ten thousand on your right hand and it, but however it will not come near you you will fall like in 91 psalm 91 7 you will fall apart in my particular life i'm not so much waiting for a husband or even children i have an acute awareness that i'm waiting for a rapture that that's the reason why the lord got me to the age of 40 without children and all that jazz i've already done a video speaking about that I've already done a video speaking about how the Lord is going to restore to me everything I've lost only in the millennial reign, a hundredfold over on this earth, that which I lost with persecutions and in the next life, eternal life, like it's written in Mark 10. So I'm not sitting with bated breath waiting for some dude to pop a ring, not in this world, like it's over. But yesterday I did a video speaking about how everything is malevolent, like this, it's all, this world is freaking over. Like I can't say that enough there was recently a third attempt on donald trump like y'all need to understand it's over the second attempt i spoke about it in one of my other videos that i am yet to upload and then before i could even upload that attempt the third one came and in that video of the second attempt afterwards i prophesied that there's going to be more attempts on his life they're just going to keep trying to kill him because people are going to try to basically get their bread buttered on both sides have their cake and eat it too they're just going to want to carry on living their lives even if it means killing people that disquiet them in in, in their dog in, in, in sorry in their in, in their insistence upon maintaining a particular malevolent um agenda with a world that is trying to assassinate anybody that is reasonable i'm i'm being targeted for assass assassination there's there's no world left like we are not going to be here another 50 years I am not waiting for Christ to give me a husband at the age of 43 and then have my first child miraculously at 45. I am waiting for a rapture. 
God keeps on calling me Naman. Naman is a king in the Old Testament that had leprosy. And he hassled the prophet of God. I think it was Elijah. Until the prophet told him, go and bathe in the river Jordan seven times. When he came out of the river Jordan, he was like a baby. His skin was like that of a baby. His people avoided him because of his leprosy. And then when he was restored to them again, they were happy and glad with him as a king. He keeps comparing me to Naman. Because Naman dunks himself at the river Jordan seven times. And then comes out like a baby. The rapture is like the cleansing of the king Naman. Naman was a king. So he was royalty. He was however rejected by his people because of his leprosy. He was dunked seven seasons in water before he was given the body of a baby. And when he recovered to his people after being cleansed of the leprosy, he then was embraced. That's how it's going to be with us. We in the run up to the rapture have got leprosy. The world rejects us. We are going to go in the sky. However, just like Elijah, Elijah, when he got raptured, when Elijah got raptured, he was at the river Jordan and then he got taken up by a chariot of fire. So Naman being dunked at the river Jordan is a, a typology or a foreshadowing or a, a mirroring of even Elijah's rapture because it happened at the river Jordan. So him being dunked seven times at the river Jordan is saying that basically whatever the river Jordan represents a rapture of a person that does not die, but gets taken by a chariot of fire. We don't die. Not everybody is going to die. Not everybody dies, but some will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. First, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then the rest who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. That, and then they will forever be with the Lord. So King Naman was a type of rapture because of his river Jordan ablution seven seasons over. Because we're going to be in the sky for seven years. And we are going to, upon going into the sky, get incorruptible bodies. When we return, we're going to be like babies too. Our skin is going to be like that of babies. In other words, we are not going to be aged. We are going to be forever young and, and, and we are forever our skin cleared. Everything is going to be perfect. We are going to have what they call incorruptible bodies, but not first before being dunked in the river Jordan seven seasons. We are going to go in the sky and then come back after seven years. And once we return, we are going to be embraced. However, in the run up to us leaving, we will have been lepers in our societies. People will have been rejective of rejecting of us. Naman of which was what? A king. So because he was a king, he also represents what we are. The scriptures that is written therein that we are a royal priesthood and a holy nation. We are royalty. But right now we're treasures and jar uh, we're treasure in jars of clay. We are underestimated and so rejected by those that we are one day going to rule over. Naman was a king that was rejected for his leprosy. We are royal priesthood that is presently rejected, but one day we're going to rule over the very people who reject us. Just like Christ was the cornerstone, but the stone that the builders rejected, but then he became the cornerstone. My point exactly. Christ is also the stone that hits the feet of that Nebuchadnezzar statue. And then that stone grows and is established forever. The stone that is small, that is underestimated, ultimately rules and reigns forever over a people. We're going to come back and rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. And then we're going to spend eternal life with him. That's what is promised us. So if the Lord keeps on calling me Naman, 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 he is saying, you're my royal priesthood and my holy nation. You are presently rejected because you've got some kind of a typological leprosy. You are going to be dunked in the river Jordan for seven seasons, seven years. When you return, you're going to have skin like babies, essentially be unaging, incorruptible, and you are going to rule and reign over the very people that rejected you for your leprosy. Whoever among them is left alive. So if the Lord is comparing me to Naman, if he keeps on calling me Naman, 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 it means that I'm not getting a husband, so to speak, or children, basically all that which you can acquire here on earth. I am getting life abundantly. I am getting the be all and end all of a proper life. I spoke about that yesterday. This here that you guys are living right now, this five to ampor existence, where you are taking a lot of nonsense rubbish in your strides. Like, you are just accepting whatever because it's material around your body area, even though there is a nakedness piercing through. You are taking in your stride bad friends that are bewitching you. You in and of yourself are a witch. In your ecosystems because of you. Like you are living such compromised, settled lives that aren't really the full deal. And because of what you imagine to be the finality of this thing that is called earth, there's nothing else coming. 
You are then juicing a very in, a, 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 unequal earth, a very unjust earth. You are juicing an earth that is ridiculous and also you are a perpetrator on this un, like um, equal earth of others. You are perpetrating others on this unequal earth because you imagine there's nothing else that you can do. You feel as if though, if Impunenjena, if I'm going to get bewitched by everything on the left and on the right, namings or tagata, though those are your mindsets, you guys, you are telling yourselves that you're going to do whatever it takes to juice a planet that's dying because you don't believe that God is going to rule and reign for a thousand years. And you also do not believe that we are going to get taken up into the sky in the rapture. You also don't believe that anybody's coming for saints because of the exquisite, intense persecution of the body of Christ at present that appears to be unceasing. You are unbelieving. While faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You have no faith because you have not applied the word of God. You have not studied to show yourself approved. And so in not believing, uh, persecuting a person that you literally believe no one is coming for. You are in a frenzy. You are in a trance. You are mesmerized by a group think that has made you worship the sun and the moon. All creation instead of the one true God. And in so worshiping your acquisitions, your jobs, your status in society. In so essentially being the be all and end all of most baddest idolaters in the game. And now making yourselves like Cain. Killing your brother Abel. Because she, or sister Abel in this instance, it's a she. Because she is giving God an acceptable sacrifice while you covet the living daylights out of her. You have left me to die. Because you thoroughly are looking around on the left and on the right of you at everybody else that is complacent in sin. And with us having been left in this position for what you call an, 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 an unacceptably long time. For there to be a God. And so, in your folly and believing that there is no God coming in your nihilism. Do the most... And it will be at the height of you doing the most that then Naman is going to be dunked for seven seasons at the River Jordan. You are going to get caught off guard by a rapture that however will not have really truly caught you off guard. It will not have truly caught you off guard. You will have just disbelieved the veracity of it in the run-up too, despite having had it being communicated to you for so long. The world has never looked like this. You are naive, especially those of you that are my age, having been born like over 1984-86. Yo. This has never been this bad. Like, it's evil. Like, the world has never looked like this. There's never been so much disinterested in the well-being of your fellow man on the left and on the right. This level of apathy towards people you ought to love has never existed before. I mean, parents were worried about kids that did not come home by 6 p.m. historically. Now entire lives are being dragged through the mud and mothers and fathers are looking at daughters and sons just suffocate. My whole family is watching me suffocate. There was a time when there was concern over the self-destructive behavior of a person in a family. Now others are just ogling at this relishing in the fact that at least we as Imosha so I'm going to come up tops. Like the world has never been this insincere and apathetic. I have never had this level of carelessness for on the part of friends. People that I was tight with are now today content to watch me perish. This is a last days epidemic and it has only ever spiked in its intensity the past couple of years. Such that it is un basically you cannot grab a magnifying glass and go to the 90s, maybe even early 2000s and backward. And see this level of crazy on the part of human beings. This level of apathy, neglect, nonchalance, blase, nonchalance, blase demeanor towards exquisite human suffering. Like it's just never been the case before. This is the freaking first time. Anyone that is my age, maybe even Gen Z's, the, 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 the rapid decline of human morality is so fast that even Gen Z's can tell a, a part of difference from when they were just children, teenagers, maybe even toddlers, uh, getting a preteen, and now. They can see that there was an evil that is just emanating in society that wasn't there before. Like things are just getting worse and worse and worse. This is not a world that any reasonable Christian can successfully bring children into. And trust that their children are not going to take over, get, get taken over by the tsunami of insistence upon apostasy. Like kids being set up for even grander failure. So that they will leave Jesus 
even if they try to hold on to him being given less and less incentive to do so like the world is becoming increasingly despondent against the cross this is unsustainable so no i'm not getting the husband that everybody is out here insisting that my heart be broken concerning i'm getting everything i asked for at a later stage when the world has been recovered to normalcy again to basically ability to live it's written in god's word that satan has come to steal kill and destroy but that jesus christ has come to give life and life abundantly the lives of saints right now are not abundant because there is no point in awarding abundant lives to saints anymore why because if your ecosystem hates your prosperity you can never really truly successfully live an abundant life in it only look at christians in persecuting countries and i've done a video of this nature their lives suck because their countries are hostile to the gospel if a people don't like your god they will never let you live at peace it's written in god's word if it is possible please strive to live at peace with everyone in your ecosystem so countries that have embraced the cross are the easiest ones to live in and the ones where christians have the best happiness because people are happy to just let them worship their god that's when such people can get given a life and a life abundantly but if everybody insists that everybody abandons true biblical christianity when everybody insists that christians stop being so bigoted and embrace the colorful community lgbtqia etc when everybody is insistent that christianity is becoming increasingly dogmatic and what it is that we have historically held on to is getting outdated and old-fashioned when when a world is like that and so anyone that is maintained in a true biblical christianity is considered dogmatic no longer is a christian then able to exercise their faith wherever it is that they live with any level of peace there is now what is called hostility towards the gospel in that region and so it is impossible to live in where god said in his word that if you are living in an impossible place for the gospel don't stay he says if they persecute you in one town flee to the next if they persecute if, if they slap you silly there dust your feet off for it'll be a better day on the day of judgment for the cities of sodom and gomorrah than it will uh, for the cities of sodom and gomorrah than it will be for the cities of Sidon and Tyre because they rejected the gospel that was given to them so if god says if they persecute you in one town flee to the next but there is nowhere to flee when you can't move from south africa to america when you can't move from south africa to botswana when you can't move from botswana to angola when you can't go anywhere and have therefore a much better existence as a christian that's the end of the world and some of the most christian nations in the world are now so hostile to the gospel that there is essentially nowhere for middle eastern christians to flee there's nowhere for nigerian christians living in the persecuting states of nigeria to flee they can't go next door to ghana they cannot go to south africa because south africa is similarly abusive now it appears to christians and when there is nowhere to flee that's when it's over if nations are all hostile there is nowhere for us to go and so if we're going to obey god's word in that they are persecuting us in one town flee to the next the only thing to do then when you are living in a country that is not supposed to be persecuting christians but it presently is is to flee to wherever you can and in my particular instance i'm fleeing to solitude i am fleeing to isolation i am fleeing to loneliness and a marginalized life living on the dregs of society unable to fellowship with anyone in my nation because they have hated me i can't go next door to zimbabwe i can't go next door to the soto there is nowhere where this level of crazy is not happening in the world it's what i'm getting at because my country that is south africa is supposed to be among the most livable in in, in the world for christians and so when nations like these are afflicting christians are then driven to what isolation that isolation of which god has this to say about it it is not good for man to be alone therefore i will make a helper suitable for him so if at all his christians are made to live alone and we can't live at peace with our fellow man we cannot establish or foster constitutional rights for anyone on the ground that are easily enforceable in any level of believability then there is only other there's only ever then one place left for us to go we can't stay lonely because that's literally fatal loneliness is freaking fatal it is homicide it is abusive loneliness is the stuff of suicide if at all saints are, are discouraged and at the dregs of society unable to coca umoya the lord will then take them to the only city left for them to live and literally it's in the sky we will go to heaven when the world squeezes christians to the dregs of society look at what they did at the commonwealth games look at what they did at the olympics 
Look at what they continue to do. Look at what Coca-Cola recently did with their little refusal to let Christians uh, write slogans of Jesus on their cans. With the world increasingly resenting Christian sentiment, Christian Judeo principles increasingly being buried in the ground and us being increasingly called dogmatic, we can only go to the sky. Because loneliness is not an option for us to be maintained in it for long periods of time because like I said, it's freaking fatal. Loneliness is fatal. I am dying from it, personally. So, if at all you're going to make all of us like Micaiah, eating meager portions of bread and water, the Lord will dunk us in the rivers Jordan for seven seasons. We will then come back to clean up and then rule and reign and acceptably now, once and for all, live on an earth that is no longer kicking us to the curb. This here is not going to result in my husband or my children because if at all the earth is so hostile today, so many of them, if at all I'm this ostracized today, what the heck is my child going to live like? If I have raised them up in the admonition of the Lord, if they don't apostatize from Christ, they're going to be given a severe disincentive to maintain their relationship with Jesus such that their lives are going to be super impossible to live. If my life in 2024, if my life in 2024 is this hard, what is going to be the life of a child in 2000, uh, of a child born in 2024, in 2000 and, 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 and sorry, in 2040? I mean, what, what, is a, what is a child in 2040 going to live like that as a Christian? If my life is so hard, if its parents' life is so bad in 2024, 2040 is going to be that much more worse, that much more astronomically bitter. It's going to be that much more horrific. So God is not giving me children because there's no earth to raise them in. It's like having kids as a Christian in Afghanistan. They are only ever going to get harassed by the community. They are facing the, like martyrdom. They like proper. Like the kind, the whole world has become like the Middle East, like Mesopotamia. The whole world has become hostile. The whole world is Iran. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so with the world now, all of it looking like this. I, I'm not scared of singlehood for the rest of my days. I am only scared of what people are going to continue to try to do to make me leave Jesus. Miserate me. Impoverish me essentially work like dogs to try and make me apostatize and while i will never leave jesus the fear and the panic they induce in my bones using witchcraft is real and i have to come here every single day and do these videos just to comfort myself just to make myself not be so scared that they are actually winning because the strong delusion is such that it's going to look like the pagans of the world are winning and when the pagans are looking like they're winning, that can rattle a Christian's faith. And that's why we have to get in God's word and realize that it can't possibly be over for us. Because the Bible says so. The Bible encourages us and lets us know that in the end, Daniel 12, the righteous will understand, but the wicked will not understand. Revelation 22, I believe, the, the holy will stay holy while the unjust will stay unjust. The filthy will stay filthy while the righteous will stay righteous. We know, according to 2 Timothy 3, that evil men and imposters in the last day will wax worse, deceiving and being deceived. We know that essentially people are just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. Nothing is going to give, no one is going to do better. However, no one is also going to do worse. So those that are already doing great, are going to do better are going to be maintained in that trajectory the righteous will do righteously but the wicked are just not going to improve like uh, indeed therefore verifying what i said earlier in describing south africa as looking like that that ancient civilization in the movie apocalypto everybody's in a frenzy everybody's in a trance everybody is mesmerized by some kind of satanic fallen angel god and in the name of that god they will literally try to satiate a bloodthirst demanded by that God on the part of those who don't allege to that God. The trance and the frenzy of ancestral worship in this country and of devil worship and of all manner and kinds of compromise despite calling yourselves Christians going on in South Africa. All this fluffy, seeker sensitive Christianity that's not really. The complacency of the body of Christ. The Ananias and Safira disposition of not coming through for the, for, for, for the fellow body of Christ. Basically, their fluffy Christianity is going to be so resonated with and so chilled in and so therefore infuriatingly uh, mesmerizing. It's going to cause such a trance in people that they, in concert with each other, will comfort one another in their crazy by persecuting the only true Christian in the room. 
there will be a decline in Christianity, a decline in the adoption of Christianity. I already did a video of that nature because of the great apostasy. And that decline of Christianity is going to cause a, 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 a self delusion on the part of those that are persecuting the true body of Christ, that they're safe. It's going to make them feel in Gati, nothing is going to give because nothing appears to be giving because wicked men are going to keep on being wicked while righteous people are going to stay righteous according to everybody else at their peril right we are going to be maintained in what you call a dogma for jesus at what you call also our peril you are going to imagine that we are essentially missing out on life at our own peril and that belief is going to cause us to be scared but we will only overcome by looking at the bible and realizing that the Bible did say that these things would happen in the last days. That men will essentially be low-key crazy. And in their crazy will be in a frenzy of groupthink. They will be in camaraderie with each other about persecuting the true body of Christ. They will come in concert with one another about how it is that Garabo needs to be thrown away. And made to eat meager portions of bread and water like Micaiah. And they will justify themselves in this because they will have walked in lives of compromise. They will have walked in some kind of, what do you call this um, thing? Um, like it is written here in 2 Timothy 2. They will have lent themselves over to ungodliness because of giving. Because of giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, right? Because of giving heed to, to wicked spirits that are out here whispering sweet nothings into your ear. People are going to persecute those who are holding on to God. And this will be all in the spirit of self-fulfilling prophecy, right? They are going to want to believe that nothing is going to give. The, um, what you call this? The fact that the scriptures will have predicted 